Hello and welcome. My name is Alexander Marrero with Alpha Star Academy, and today we're going to be solving the problem maximizing productivity. In this problem, there are n barns, each closing at time ci. Bessie visits barn i exactly ti units of time after waking up, and she wants to know how many barns is she going to be able to visit if she wakes up at different moments in time, right? So if she wakes up later, she's going to be able to visit fewer barns because more of them are going to be closed. If she wakes up earlier, she's going to be able to visit more barns because more of them will be open. So Bessie's going to ask us two questions of the form. Can I visit at least V barns before they close if I wake up at time S? And our objective is to answer all of Bessie's questions correctly. So let's take a look at an example. Here we have n barns and two questions. The first array is the closing time of each barn. So for example, this means the fourth barn is going to close at time six. Well, this means that the second barn is going to close at time three. Well, the second array is the time that Bessie waits to visit the barn after waking up. So this says she visits barn five after, uh, after waiting three hours. This means that she visits barn one after waiting two hours. And the two questions she's going to ask are, can she visit four barns if she wakes up at time one? And can she visit two barns if she wakes up at time four? So we already know the closing time of each barn, but we want to calculate the arrival time. So for question one, uh, she, her uh, wake up time is one. So I'm going to replace S with one here. And we can calculate all of the arrival time. So we get three, two, two, three, four. And we can see that for barns two, three, four, and five, her arrival time is before the closing time. So she can visit barns uh, two, three, four, and five, but she cannot visit barn one because her arrival time is after it already closed. So she cannot visit this one, but we can see that she can visit four barns. So the answer to this question is yes. Yeah. Now let's um, undo all of this and we'll try a question two. So the answer to question one was yes, but what happens if she wakes up at time four? Can she still visit two barns? Let's see. So we will replace, replace S with four. We get six, five, five, six, seven. And here we can see that the only barn that she can visit is going to be barn number five. Why barn number five? It's the only time where she arrives before it closes. All the other ones, she either arrives after it closed or she arrives when it's closing. Uh, so she won't be able to visit any of these barns. So she can only visit one barn. So in this case, the answer to her question is no. And one key observation for this problem is that Q is particularly large. Q is 200,000. Uh, as Q is so large, this means we must be able to answer each of Best and Bessie's questions instantly. And anytime you're given one of these sort of query answering questions and you need to have the answer instantly, uh, right? You, need, you can't use too many operations to answer each question. Uh, you should try to store the answer to each question in an array. So to achieve this uh, question, we're going to create an array so that visit t returns the number of barns we can visit if we wake up at time t. So we're going to build this inverse index that when given a value of time, it's going to instantly spit out for us the, the number of barns we can visit if we wake up then. If we have this visit array, then determining the result of Bessie's question is super easy. So if we have visit S, right? So this is saying, how many barns can we visit if we wake up at time S? If this is greater than or equal to V, the number of barns Bessie wants to visit, then we can simply print yes. Otherwise, we just print no. So once we construct this visit array, the problem becomes very simple. We loop over all of the questions and then just compare uh, visit S to V. If visit S is bigger, we print out yes. Otherwise, we print out no. So with this, let's jump into the code. Um, and we're going to start off step one. 
just reading in our variables and declaring some helpful constants. So in this problem, the maximum value of time is 1 million. So this max time variable is just going to store 1 million plus 1. And I'm going to use this to initialize all of my arrays. Uh, because the visit array has to be long enough to store every single possible uh, different time value that could be occurring throughout this problem. Next up, we're going to read in n and q. n is the number of barns, while q is the number of questions. And then we're going to read in c, the closing time of each barn, and t, the time that Bessie wants to visit each barn. Now we're going to try to create this visit array, and we're going to do it in two steps. So the first step, we're going to create the visit array, and we're going to increase visit t by one for each barn we can, uh, which can be visited if we wake up at time t, but not if we wake up at time t plus one. So what does this mean? Let's take a look at our, our, at our example. Uh, so for example, let's look at barn number two. Uh, for barn number two, we can uh, visit barn number two if we wake up at time one, but we cannot visit barn number two if we wake up at time two, right? Because it will have closed. So therefore, we would for bar number two, we would increase visit one by one. For bar number three, we can visit bar number three if we wake up at time two, but we cannot visit bar number three if we wake up at time three, right? Because one plus three is four, so the barn will have already closed. So we'd increase visit two by one. Uh, why are we doing it this way? Uh, the idea is we need to construct this visit array very quickly because in addition to Q being large, N can also be large. So we need to uh, create this visit array very quickly. We can't afford to sort of um, loop over uh, something multiple times inside this loop. So what's happening is for each barn, we're calculating this value leeway, which is just the difference between the closing time and the time that I plan on visiting it. Uh, so this is sort of the amount of leeway I have between um, the, the time I will arrive and the time will close. If leeway is negative, for example, in this question, um, leeway would be, uh, for, for barn number one here, leeway would be negative. And this just means it's impossible to ever visit the barn. Uh, so we don't need to record that. Um, but if leeway is positive, then we're just going to increase visit at leeway by one. And note, this doesn't quite give us the visit variable we wanted, um, but we can update it really quick in order to turn it into the array we wanted. So what's happening here is we're going to start at the maximum value of time, and we're going to loop backwards and sum up the entirety of the visit array. So What's happening here is maybe visit used to look like this. So maybe that there was one barn that we could visit at time two, uh, but not at time three. Maybe there were two barns that we could visit at time three, but not four. Maybe there was one barn we could visit at time five, but not six. And maybe there was one barn we could visit at time seven, but not eight. And then, if we loop over backwards and sum up all adjacent values, then what's going to happen is we're going to fill in the array backwards and get sort of a monotonically decreasing array, which stores the number of barns we can visit if we wake up at time t. So this is saying, um, for example, here, if I wake up at time 0, I can visit every barn. right? I can visit all of these barns. If I wake up at time one, I can visit all of these barns. If I wake up at time two, I can wake up, I can uh, visit all of these barns. If I wake up at time three, I can visit every barn except for this one. So I can visit four barns. If I wake up at time four, I can visit two barns. Why two? Well, I can visit all of these barns, but I can't visit anything over here. So it's just two. If I wake up at this time, uh, you know, you'll visit just this barn, 
and we already knew we could visit this barn. So we're just looping over the array backwards and filling in this visit array so that it finally stores the number of barns we can visit if we wake up at time t. Once we've created this array, we already talked about how useful it was in answering all of Bessie's queries. So now we can pull up the code we saw earlier. Uh, we're going to loop over all uh, Q questions. We're going to read in the value V and the value S. And then we're just going to check, is V less than or equal to visit S? If it is, we print yes. Otherwise, we print no. And then we're done. So all of the hard work in this problem was creating this visit array. Um, and this is a very common tactic that you see anytime you have sort of these Q queries questions. So anytime you're trying to respond to a bunch of questions really quickly, uh, a very good starting point is to create an array that stores the answers to all of the questions. All right, so let's submit the problem to the grading server, max prod. And we should see all test cases passing. This one might take a little bit of time to grade. So in the meantime, thank you guys all for watching the videos. Um, I hope you guys had a fun February contest and I'll see you guys all again for the March contest. So thank you guys. Um, and as you can see, Shortly here, we will pass all of the test cases. All right, that's all. Bye-bye, guys. Have a wonderful week.